Reddit rebellion raging on again today as Robinhood taps investors for even more money, billions more. Kate Rooney has the latest. Kate. Hi, Brian. Robinhood is getting some emergency cash from its venture investors to help the startup essentially stay in business. Robinhood announced a new $2.4 billion fundraise from existing shareholders. That includes Andreessen Horowitz, Rivet, Sequoia are all on that list. And that's on top of a billion dollars they brought in last week. So total $3.4 billion for Robinhood just since last Thursday. To put this in context, in Robinhood's eight-year history, it had raised a total of $2 billion. And as far as why they need this money, CEO Vlad Tenev talked to Elon Musk on Clubhouse over the weekend and said that Robinhood needed to post $3 billion in deposits. Robinhood also said in a blog post on Friday that those capital requirements from its clearing partner increased tenfold last week. That's been thanks to people bidding up stocks on social media and piling into some of those same names. And after restricting some names like GameStop last week, Robinhood lifted the limit for GameStop in particular today. That maximum is now 20 shares per person. That's up from just one share this morning. At the same time, Robinhood is seeing backlash from lawmakers. We've got a new class action lawsuit over the weekend, and still there's a lot of blowback on social media. Sources telling CNBC that, that an IPO has also been what they call deprioritized. The company, we're told, is working through some of these more pressing near-term issues. Brian, back to you. Uh, Kate Rooney, Kate, thank you very much. Uh, Dan, your take on all this. I mean, listen, here, here's the thing. Uh, first off, I don't understand why the CEO of Robinhood is talking about pretty material stuff on a super exclusive invitation only private social media network a clubhouse to Elon Musk. That's its own issue there. I'm sure lawyers might have a field day with that one. But what's your take on the whole thing with, with Robin? Do you think it does have a big future? Listen, I, I give them credit. They're trying to be transparent. They went to Clubhouse with Elon because they're trying to talk to the people that are using their platform and who are really annoyed. I mean, listen, they have a huge PR problem. It doesn't seem like they have a capital problem, especially with some of this volatility and some of the issues that are um, you know, kind of plaguing them over the last week or two go away here. But again, here's the question. Can this company operate if they are not selling their order flow to operations like Citadel? And the question, or you know, the answer might be no. And if the, if the answer is no, then they may have a hard time kind of growing this valuation from these levels. This capital might be a stopgap to keep them in business in the meantime, but their customers are pissed and they're moving away. Talk to anybody who works in a major brokerage, brokerage firm. The last 24, 48 uh, trading hours have been really busy signing up new accounts and they're coming from Robinhood. Yeah, Pete, very quick comment before we go to our next guest on, on Robinhood. I mean, could they, you think somebody will pay six, sure. six bucks a trade? Can they do it without the sale of order flow? Um, I think they're going to have to continue with the model that they had in the past, and they're going to have to work on that. But, Brian, when you add as many clients as they added in the last year, or even if you go back 36 months, it's, it's an amazing number. They're fortunate that they aren't private now, or, I mean, public now, because then I think they would have an issue. But they were able to raise that money so quick. It was unbelievable. $3.5 billion in just a matter of days. I think that's a statement for mm. what people think about the future still for Robinhood. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's move on. Our next guest believes that Robinhood will ultimately go public. Let us bring in First Mark Capital's Rick Heitzman. He is a venture capitalist known for successful early investments in both Pinterest and Airbnb. Rick, thanks for coming on here. You don't believe that this will ultimately scuttle any plans to go public and lack of public confidence? I think for the short term, there is a, lot, a general lack of confidence. Some of the other players, even in the emergent space, like public, are picking up a ton of accounts, kind of per what da uh, Dan was just saying. And I think you're going to see a lot of the other emergent financial institutions do well. But whether or not they pivot their business model away from selling their order flow and away from selling their data, where they persist in this model, they've aggregated millions of accounts and millions of this whole generation of investors sees Robinhood as the way that financial markets are being democratized. I understand that. And that's one side of the ledger, Rick, right? Customers and their order flow. But those customers, they don't pay anything. And now you got Robinhood every couple days going to its partners and asking, can I have a billion here? 
a billion there. They've taken in, I think, to Kate's point, more money in the last three days than they raised in the entirety of their existence. And I think they needed capital to support that order flow. And I think that's just a normal part of their business model transition. But what you're seeing is they're accumulating assets and they're going to be able to monetize that assets either through order flow, through traditional measures or through other ways in the future. I think you know, even if you looked at companies like <laughs> Facebook, like 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 Twitter, who had early monetization issues, but they were pioneering a new business model. I think public is trying to do it in a very transparent way among the next generation brokerages. They'll be able to get through this. I think trust is going to be a key issue, and Robinhood has to rebuild that trust. But when they get to the other side, I think they're going to be this generation's financial services brands. Hey, Rick, it's Dan. Um, thanks for joining us, bud. Hey, so, so listen, when I, look at your, yeah. when I look at your portfolio and I look at your investments and your exits, I look at companies that were truly innovative and disruptive and changed industries on top of their heads. Tell me, what is Robinhood innovating on? What is their massive disruption other than price? And do you think that these guys, the PR problem they have with their existing customers is going to be something that they're able to get over if they change their business model in a way that actually costs them money as the customer? And that's the big issue, right? Or is Robinhood MySpace or are they Facebook? And is public dot com or one of the other players going to wind up being the big winner in the space so what they're innovating on is they're actually going directly to the customer and you know instead of having the layers of financial institutions of brokerages and research houses and wholesalers they're enabling whether it be the elon musk of the world or all all these next great companies to have a more direct relationship with the customer and and this generation of investors are used to having a, a, a direct conversation and they're going to be, they're getting closer to enabling and facilitating that direct conversation with the companies. And what you're starting to see, and whether it was on Clubhouse last night or even some of the private chat rooms, that um, in a compliant way, they're going to begin to facilitate a lot of the groups around how companies interact and how investors interact with the companies that they're part of. And it's going to be this kind of direct to investor or direct to company relationship, no different than direct to commerce brands have been created or even direct to consumer media brands like Netflix. But but Rick, Rick, Rick we got to go. But I but I, I got to ask you this. Do you would you if you're an investor, do you approve of the idea that the CEO is in a private chat room on an invitation only <laughs> app clubhouse talking to Elon Musk about basically capital requirements that the clearing partners are. I mean, is that a good strategy? I wouldn't say it's a good strategy. It's a private company, so he gets to make his own decisions. Uh, I think a lot of that was later came out via Twitter and other places. But I think you're, there's a lot of conversations goes on. If I was Robin Hood, you, they, they're real, their real concern now is building trust and credibility and having an authentic conversation. Yeah. And if I was that CEO, I would begin by having a much more public much more honest, much more transparent conversation with my investors as well as all these different stakeholders and parties and in interest. Yeah, I would say they would need a better PR strategy, but that would imply they might have a PR strategy. Rick Heitzman. Rick, thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. All right, for more now on the retail trading mania and how to capitalize on the market rotation triggered by the Reddit rebellion, you can head to cnbc.com slash pro. Okay. Uh, Tim, you know, I wasn't trying to knock Robin Hood, but I think you get my point. I mean, they're kind of fumbling around on this thing, which they're a, they're a startup. I get it. What would you like to see from Robin Hood? Well, I, I think they need to, again, they need to come out formally and talk about really what, what the strains are from the clearinghouse perspective, how much capital is actually used, what, what pressures were put on them, why they needed to raise this money. Again, we just talked about how it was pretty easy for them to go to their existing investors, and granted, they're going to be able to buy more shares in the future at a discount, et cetera. It was good for them. But, but that why their business model ran into some strains, and, and that, to clarify, what was, was there some protecting of, of seemingly investment partners, which I, I'm sure they're ready to push back on. So I think that's really critical. And, and I think, you know, for, for the broader investment community, it's interesting because then you know, there's, there's some sense that people are now looking at SPACs differently. Well, guess what? I mean, you know, SPACs may be a place where a lot of this group of investors that are disgruntled um, are, are, are seemingly 
going to get a little bit more accountability and, and you, you actually will have better mark to markets and SPACs because they behave a little bit more like private equity in public vehicles. And we could probably spend another segment on, on this, but I, I just think it's about clarifying structures, products, um, and, and ultimately really where Robinhood's business model ran into these strains. Yeah, certainly. And by the way, your, your point on SPACs is well taken. Our friend Tillman Fertitta going public today, fast acquisition. That stock up 5%, wheels up, doing a SPAC today. A lot out there, Tim. Thank you very much. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.